Welcome to Real Time, Florida Sportsman. This week we're at a Boca Raton and we're looking for Pelagics. It's time to find the shortest route to the hottest bite. We scan the Florida Sportsman community looking for the best fishing reports and travel to make real anglers our local guides. Give me some of that! Together we let you in on secret spots and hometown moves. That's what I'm talking about! Oh yeah, <laughs> she's done for now. This week we head out of Boca Raton Inlet. We'll be live baiting, looking for pelagics. Wow, dude. <laughs> nice. God, how cool is that? All coming up on Real Time Florida Sportsman. Hey, Ryan. How you doing, George? Good, man. Looking forward to it here, huh? Yeah, man. Nice day. Go get out there, go catch some fish. What a beautiful location. Yeah, no doubt. God, this no place doubt. is sick. Even if we don't catch fish, it's nice to be down here. Let's get out there. All right, man. Boca Raton is located on the southeast coast of Florida. You know, with its proximity to the Gulf Stream and abundance of reef systems, it's a perfect place to slow troll and kite fish with live baits when you're looking for pelagics. All right, first thing this morning, Boca Inlet, Ryan Tubbs. What do you got planned for us? Well, we're gonna go out there, go look for some nice nice current to the north and uh, some blue water. We're gonna try slow trolling a little bit this morning until uh, until we get enough wind to put some kites up. Hopefully catch some sails, some kings, a wahoo, maybe a little bit of everything. So we got the bait already, stopped by one of your pens, picked up some goggle eyes. That's the real preferred method down here is, uh, is live bait. So the bait is the key, right? Yeah, good bait, good fish. We're sitting down here, we're in February, actually beautiful weather. Temperature's supposed to be in the 80s today. It's hard to beat South Florida this time of the year. Uh, beautiful location out of Boca Inlet. We've had great success filming out of here before, so I'm excited for the day. Yeah, me too. Conditions were perfect as far as Chamber of Commerce weather. Not so perfect for fishing though. You know, these calm days can be tough for fishing. You, you know, it seems as if snottier the weather, the better the bite. These clear skies, light winds, are not always conducive for fishing. We know we're gonna have the odds somewhat stacked against us, but we're hopeful leaving the inlet. I'm excited to be running the brand new 260 LTS from Triton. Big bay boat, newly designed. We actually have hole number one, the first one produced. It's a great platform. I'm excited to get it out here and see what it can do. All right, we stopped out here about 100 feet of water. Yep, yep. got some nice blue water, a little tide to the north and uh, Saw awesome. some flyers in here too, so what's our plan? Just gonna slow troll, we, we don't have enough wind for a kite. Yeah, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fish uh, two deep rods with a you know, four to six ounce sinker on there. Okay. We're gonna put it 15, 20 feet up the line. You'll put it on your uh, Bimini twist. Okay. And uh, fish two rods up top on spinners and kind of just pull them around and see what we can not capture. Let's get on. All right. Ryan's been on a decent bite, you know. He's, uh, he, he hits the reef systems hard. He does a lot of king fishing in the area, you know, sail fishing tournaments, as well as, you know, sword fishing. So he, he's really dialed in on the area. You know, it's kind of hit or miss this time of the year, but we're hopeful for, you know, a good day out on the water. So we're just gonna run four, four lines. You know, on a smaller bay boat like this, this is kind of a perfect setup. Not a lot of wind. So to keep the baits nice, nice and straight, all you need to do is just bump it in gear. You know, just, just enough to keep the boat moving. It'll keep the bait swimming. You can cover a little bit more water. You know, he's gonna put some weights on a couple to get him down deeper. A really effective way of, of fishing on the east coast of Florida. So how do you weight these down? Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a, uh, got a little bit of telephone wire, you got a four ounce lead, and you put it right on your Bimini twist. You just twist it around three, four times and uh, send it down. When you get a bite, a lot of times the lead will fall off and then you don't have to worry about the lead anymore. And we're just using wire today because a lot of kingfish, you know, have, have, as we learned in the past too, doing this type of fish, and there's wahoo out here, a lot of toothy critters. So you're really not gonna cut down on your, your sail bites. They're still gonna eat it. So it's nice to run a piece of tracer wire. Uh, we got a little stinger rig in the back too. You never know what you're gonna encounter. It's better just be prepared for everything. You don't wanna lose a good wahoo to cut mono leader. You know, the use of these mylar dredges have become more and more popular when you slow troll and live bait. A lot of sailfish guys during tournaments are using them. 
And it's something that you can do to increase the profile. And it looks like a, a great school of bait fish behind the boat. You know, and I, I've kind of adapted it for bay boat use and I drape it right through, actually through the power pole. Works perfect when you're slow trolling. Mylar dredge, um, it's just an, an added tool to you know, improve your chances of, of you know, fish seeing your baits. All this thing is is just something down there creating a profile that looks like a school of bait fish. And with a mylar dredge, you know, these big boats are pulling these dredges with natural baits. They can have 50, 75 you know, natural ballyhoo or mullet on them. Smaller boat, you really don't have the ability to do that. So the mylar dredge is easy to pack, easy to deploy, just throw it right out the back and uh, it's a, a great way to increase your chances of catching more fish. This segment is brought to you by Yeti Coolers, built for the wild. We think Ryan, there we go. Got him? Yep. King maybe? I don't know. You clear that line for you? No, you just leave him out. Just slow trolling along, reef line, marking a bunch of fish. Never know what it is out here. That's the great thing about coming out here live baiting. You just don't know. Get a gaff. What's it look like? Uh, I like a little 10 pound king. Oh yeah. Not bad. Hey, saw the boat, he didn't like that. <laughs> no doubt. There we go. Got the skunk off the boat. Yeah, first one's always the hardest. All right. Typical size that you're getting down here this time of the year? Yeah, yeah, 10, 12 pounders. Throw him in the box. These waters this time of the year, you can get tons of these smaller kings. Um, the thing with using these goggle eyes though, you kind of weed out the smaller king fish and you're really just looking for the bigger fish. Hence the use of wire and stinger treble hook. Um, but the first one was a decent one. So these slick calm conditions, they can make fishing kind of tough though, right? Yeah, the slick calm definitely makes it tough. You don't want it too nice. No. you. The nicer it is, usually the tougher the bite is. But I tell you, those snotty days you come out here, the wind's howling, easy to keep a kite up, the fish are chewing. You got to work a little harder when it's slick like this, but we'll catch them. Yeah, we'll get on them. We'll pick away. That one smoked off. You got a good fish on there. Yeah. The next bite we got was a sick bite. You know, just came up and hammered it. And, you know, almost acted like a, a you know, a big king or a wahoo. Just constant, just smoking the drag. Just almost dumped the whole spool off of that battle too. And uh, I was, I, I knew it had to be a big fish. Wow, dude. <laughs> thing whacked this. He dumped this fool. Dumped this fool. Stop finally. Yeah. Think it's a big king? Either that or either that or a wahoo. That was an impressive first run. You took almost all your line on the first run. This thing holds like 350 yards of 20 pound and it about dumped the whole thing on the first run. I'm on another line here. I'm on the other long line, the other flat line. Yeah, we got a little tangle. I don't think it had much to do with it though. I mean, less pressure. I was putting less pressure on him when I was fighting him with the tangle and it just, it just bit through, you know? It just came across his mouth the wrong way and broke us off. Oh no, did I lose him? Did you? Oh, no. You probably bit through your wire. Oh, are you kidding me? Yep, bit through the wire. I think that was a wahoo. Clink. I'm so bummed right now. It's all good, we'll get another one. Aggravating when that happens. <laughs> Dude, that thing was smoking the line off. That was a donk. That's a fish we'll never know there. 
after a, a, a while battling him, something gave, you know, he actually bit through the wire. And talking to Ryan, he said, you know, you have to scale the wire down. In these calmer conditions, this clear water, you have to back your tackle down. And unfortunately, because of that, you know, I think I might have lost his fish. Yeah, the bite slowed up. You know, we, we decided just to, we made a little run jog up to the north looking for some fresh, cleaner water. Um, the radio was slow, really nothing was going on. Finally though, we had enough wind. We saw a sail flopping out in front of us. We decided to deploy the kites. We got a sail right here in front of the boat. Come on. All right, we got a little wind. We had sailfish flopping around in front of us, so. We're going to a party. Playing with helium. You know, you need a decent breeze, um, probably five to eight miles an hour, even with a helium balloon to deploy a kite. These guys down here have this stuff so dialed in that they have these helium tanks, they inflate these balloons and it helps hold the kite up in the air. Even with that helium balloon though, you need a little bit of breeze to keep the kite up. Um, conditions we're right now for it. It's a great way to present a bait on the surface, you know, to sailfish and other pelagics. So this was the technique that we were gonna try. This segment is brought to you by Penn. Let the battle begin. So uh, we switched things up a little bit. Saw a sailfish flopping in here. A little wind now, so we're able to fly the kite with a helium balloon. And this is one of the, you know, probably one of the best ways to target billfish in this region. Flying kites, kites off the bay boat. It's a great presentation. You just sit these goggle eyes up on a kite and just dangle them right below the water's surface. Send out a lot of vibration. Got the trolling motor in the water. Make sure you check all your clips before you put all your stuff out. Make sure they ain't too tight, not too loose. The kite fishing is so great because it presents the bait right up on the surface. Um, the bait you know, is up on top, thrashing around, you know, creating a lot of disturbance. It really can't flee away from a sailfish once it comes up to it. It only has so far to run. And uh, sailfish can be lazy. So with that bait right there up, up on top, with it not really being able to run away from them, it's, a, you know, it's very effective for sailfishing. Well, we saw a flop, uh, fish flopping around in here. We saw one free jumping. So we know we're kind of, they're kind of in this area. Not a lot of wind. We're trying to make it work with the trolling motor and the balloon. Yeah, if they're, the only thing you can do is just wait them out. Hope, hope and pray and wait them out. If you're seeing them in a spot, they've got to be coming through, so maybe we'll get a shot here in a minute. It wasn't too much longer uh, and we saw another sailfish outside of us uh, flopping around, just free jumping. You know, my first inclination is just to run right to it. And I told that Ryan that, well, let's, go, let's head over there. But, you know, he knows these fish. He knows these fish are heading into the current. There's a north tide. These fish are going to be swimming south. So he kind of just, you know, laid a plan to kind of cut the fish off, headed a little bit south. And wouldn't you know, we get in front of the fish, he gets the bite. Good job, brother. Good job. Strong work. Good job. Nice. You know, funny thing is, is we saw these fish flopping out in front of us. I wanted to run right to them. Ryan knew better. He said, let's run to the south. They're moving south, down tide, down current. He kind of just made our way just out in front of where we saw them flopping. They got bit, man. They bit the flat line. Didn't even take the kite baits. Bit the flat line. Funny thing is, they all have wire on them because there's a lot of kings out here. You know, people think you need, oh, you can't use wire for sailfish. They don't care. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo! Nice! You kind of just dropped straight to him there. Watch that kite. So this is your thing. You do a lot of these sail tournaments, don't you? Yeah, we fish quite a few of them. It's real popular down here, and especially in the winter time. Multiple fish days. I mean, that's just typical for you guys down here. A little slow today in February. It's 80 something degrees in the middle of February. Somebody wanted to come down here and do this. What's the best time? What would you say the best time to get down here? All around, not just sail fish, all around. Dolphin, I'd have tuna. to say March, April, May. March, springtime. Yeah, that spring runs 
probably the best fishing you can get. Big variety, a lot of fish, big fish. There he is, nice. Acrobatic. Stubborn, huh? Yeah, man. Got him on that real light line. We don't want to <laughs> break him off. Well, we already had the break off today. We don't need more break offs. I tell you what, if he even came off now, we got the best of this one. It's just that show. Oh, he's going to jump again. He's tired. He's tired. He's wearing himself out. It's a half hearted jump. You go all, all the way up underneath? Are you good? No, Come just... back out? There's oh, coming. Look at that. What a pretty fish. All right, let me, let me go ahead and land this one. Whew. She's tired. Yeah, she should pop up right. Right here. Foul hook. Foul hook, that's why. Need some pliers there? Yeah. You know, it's important to keep these guys in the water. You don't need to pull them out. Even if you wanted them out, just measure them on the side of the boat, replica. This one's still nice and fresh. What do you say, let them go? Yeah, man. Try it's looking pretty strong. All right, I'm going to let them go. Cool. <laughs> Good job. Good job, brother. Way to stick them. Cool man. Wow. Looking for one of those all day. God, there he goes. You can just see him swimming down in the deep. That fish was all over the place. That thing was, you know, that was the one you want. <laughs> it was when you got a first first time somebody's catching a sailfish, that's the one you want jumping around. That thing gave us a show and just didn't quit. He was out of the water more than he was in it. You know, that's the reason why we came down here was to catch a sailfish. We got the one. You know, and, and this is the time and this is the place to be here. You know, some days these guys are catching 10, 15, 20 fish a day, but I'm happy just to get this one to the boat. This segment brought to you by Yozuri, fish the best. In today's seminar, I'm gonna to talk to you about utilizing your smaller boats offshore. You know, we're on a 26 Triton today. It's a big platform and it's an adequately sized boat to be out here on most days. It's a great platform to even fly the kites. The, with the assistance of the trolling motor, these bay boats have huge live well systems, which is really important to keep your baits nice and frisky when you're out here. You know, also with the advancement of electronics and the use of personal locator beacons, you know, it made it much safer to be offshore in a smaller boat. These motors are much more reliable, much more fuel efficient, which also increases your range. So the bay boat, once thought of as just merely an inshore tool, is really effective at getting you offshore and getting you on the pelagic bite. Yeah, things were, things were definitely slow. You know, everybody's kind of, you, you get lulled into some boredom, you start taking naps, the cameramen are laying around, everybody's laying around, you're looking for food to eat, changing music songs up, just hoping for the bite, you know, hoping something changes. It took us a while, you know, but then we got another king bite. Pretty slow bite so far, struggling. You know, had a good bite off early this morning, small king. You gotta put the time in though, got another king bite here. We're marking plenty of fish, they gotta eat. Just a matter of time. Funny thing is, we have this beautiful presentation of these kite baits, and he comes up and eats a flat line and just drop back. It's fun on them spinning rods. Yeah, man. Light tackle. There's a Goodyear blimp in the background. Just ain't ready yet. Nice. That's why you need wire right there. Look at the teeth on that thing. Razor sharp. Sometimes you just gotta know when to call it. You know, we got a couple kingfish, got the sail bite. I was hoping to get a dolphin or a wahoo to bring back, to have Chef Matt at the Waterstone cook for us, but it just wasn't happening. The Waterstone is a, is a really nice place. I mean, right on Boca Inlet, you can't ask for a better location. Right at the mouth of the inlet, 
Just recently renovated, beautiful rooms, you know, awesome restaurant and bar, just a perfect place to stay if you come down here and fish. We're gonna get some dinner at Waterstone. We had a great table outside on the water. You know, Chef Matt had something prepared for us. He was just gonna kinda a la carte it for us, just bring us out whatever he wanted to bring us. And I tell you what, man, we ate like kings. We didn't bring him anything to, to, to cook for us, but I don't know. He found some fresh fish, had some, some steak for us and some pork chops. Oh, and then dessert. We guys practically had to be rolled out of the place at the end of the night. Ryan's, you know, like a typical guy down here, one of the young guns, you know. There's so many, this is such a popular area for sport fishing and tournament fishing that these young and upcoming guys are, the, you know, they're the kind of the future. They, they're trendsetters. They're, they come up with new techniques and they're eager and they're energetic. So it's always fun to fish with these young guys. You know, I kind of learned this, this kite fishing from these guys that I fish with, from the, from, from the Ryans and, and the, in the past shows, the Nick Seas and all these guys. And I've, you know, utilized these techniques, brought them home, and I actually tarpon fish now, you know, with kites. Uh, everybody looks at me strange, but it's a very effective uh, way of presenting a bait. You know, Boca Raton, the southeast section of Florida, is a great place to come and fish. Even when the fishing isn't red hot, you can make a day of it. You get out there, catch some fish, and have a great time. If it wasn't for the Florida sportsman community, I may never have discovered the Boca Raton area. What was it, a sale? What was it? I don't know. What was it? What was it? In today's seminar, I'm going to talk to you. you um, what else was I going to talk about?